welcome to another video for the Edexcel Further Pure 1 Maths A-Level Syllabus. In this video, we're going to start our work on numerical solutions of equations. Taking a look at the scheme of work, the Further Pure 1 course essentially asks us to be able to perform the following numerical operations or numerical methods. Interval bisection, linear interpolation and newton raphson process. All of those things will approximate a solution to f of x is equal to zero, will give us a root of the function f of x. Now the big idea behind this actually comes from a core 3 topic, which some FP1 students have not done. In, F, in core 3, um, we're asked to locate roots of f of x by considering changes of sign of f of x in the interval uh, of x in which f of x is continuous. Now I'm going to spend this video briefly going through that idea before we start the techniques required for further pure 1. I.e. what we're going to learn about is what I call the change in sign rule. The change in sign rule. Okay, before we start, this whole chapter is about locating roots of functions. Let's start with the idea of what a root is. Here is a function f of x is equal to x squared subtract 3x subtract y. And I've graphed that function. I've let y equal x squared subtract 3x subtract 1 and plotted all the x and y coordinates against each other. Where would the roots of this function be? Well, hopefully, you will think to yourself, the roots are here and here. The roots are approximately, it's just less than zero and just bigger than, say, three. They're the approximations of the roots. What do I mean by root? It is the x value, or the x values, that make the function equal to zero. Or you could think of it as the solution to the equation uh, when you make y is zero, x squared subtract 3x subtract 1. It is uh, the x value that makes the function 0, or you can think of it as the solution to f of x is equal to 0. Another one, just for you to um, think about what roots are again. New function. What's the root approximately? Well, again, the root is this point here, and it's ne about nearly 2.5. What is the root? It is the x value that makes the function have a y value equal to zero. Or you could think of it as the solution to f of x is equal to zero, i.e. the solution to zero is equal to x cubed subtract 3x squared plus 3x subtract 4, the x solution to that um, equation. Right, let's tighten up this definition. What is the root of a function then? A root of a function f of x is the x value that makes the function equal to zero, i.e. it is the solution of the equation f of x is equal to zero. So if we solve that function equals zero, that will give us the root or roots. So in the example we did, here was our function, x cubed subtract 3x squared plus 3x subtract 4, we, um, the roots will be the solution to the equation f of x is equal to 0, i.e. the solution to the equation 0 is equal to x cubed subtract 3x squared plus 3x subtract 4. Now, in an ideal world, we can always find the solution to this via algebraic methods. We have techniques we might be able to factorise, use a formula or something of that nature to find the solution for x to that equation. Other times, we don't have those methods, methods available to us. So what we could do is we could draw a graph, graph the function, and use the graph to approximate the value of that root. And here would be a good approximation. So we know it's nearly 2.5. It's less than 2.5. X is certainly just a little bit less than 2.5. So the idea of this whole chapter is using the graphs and some methods involving those graphs to find these roots, or a good approximation to these roots. Now, this is the big idea involved in all of the methods, and it's called the change of sign rule. 
It says, if you have a function and it is continuous over a certain interval of x's that you're considering, and over that interval of x's, say x is somewhere between a and b, the function changes sign. And by that, I mean f of a is negative, let's say, f of b, the other side is positive, or the other way around, then you know for absolute certain there is a root in the interval, there is a root between uh, the numbers a and b. Now let's draw a picture to illustrate my point here. Imagine this is a function. This is a function f of x. This is my x-axis, and going up here is my y-axis, let's say. Okay, now, imagine I considered an interval. I'm going to consider an interval here. I'm going to call this x is equal to a, and here, let's say, uh, x is equal to b. Now, when x is a, what's the value of the function? Well, the value of the function is f of a. When x is b, what's the value of the function? f of b. You substitute b into the function. Now, over this interval, the graph is certainly continuous. I can draw the graph without taking my pen off the page. So it's continuous between a and b. Furthermore, the value of f of a is certainly a negative number. It's below the x-axis. It's a negative number. And the value of f of b is certainly bigger than 0. It's above the x-axis. Now, given that I can't take my pen off the page between drawing from f of a to f of b, and f of a is a negative number and f of b is a positive number, there must be some number x, the root, between a and b that makes f of um, x equal to 0. So actually, instead of calling it uh, x, I'm going to call it alpha. There must be some x is equal to alpha, right, where alpha is between a and b, so that f of alpha gives you the answer 0. And that is the big idea behind all the methods we're going to do in this chapter. Right, let's apply the theorem. Here's an example. Show that there is a root to f of x is equal to x to the power of 4 plus 2x subtract 3 in the interval, that should just be in the interval, uh, negative 2 to negative 1. I.e., what I mean by that is x is some number between negative 1 and negative 2. I don't mean coordinates there. Now, I can use the change of sign rule. All I have to do is work out the function at x is negative 2. And if I do that, I substitute negative 2 in here, I should get the answer 9. Then I need to work out the function at negative 1. If I substitute negative 1 in here, I get uh, into this function, I get negative 4. Now, here's the key uh, idea with the change of sign. We have a change of sign. We know f is continuous. A polynomial is, all, is continuous. So we know that f is continuous between negative 2 and negative 1. So there's been a change of sign. f is continuous over the interval. Therefore, there must be there is a root between uh, 0 less, uh, sorry, not 0, uh, negative 2 less than x less than negative 1. There must be a root in that interval, and we're done. Okay, so a simple application of the change of sign rule. Here's one for you to have a go at yourself. Five seconds, pause the video, work through, then I'll go through the answers. Okay, to show that there is a root between negative 2 and negative 1.5, all we need to do is evaluate the function 
at negative 2, this side. Evaluate the function at negative 1.5. And hopefully, we get a change of sign. So let's do that. Let's evaluate this function at negative 2. What do we get? Well, we get negative 1. If we evaluate the function at negative 1.5, what do we get? Well, we get 3.125. Therefore, we have a change of sign. f is continuous. Therefore, there is a root between uh, negative 2 less than x, less than uh, negative 1.5. There is some root in between that interval. And we're done. We, we don't know what the root is, but we certainly know it's some number between negative 2 and negative 1.5. Right, I've got an exercise for you to do. Just two questions. Pause the video, try these, and then mark your work against the, against the solutions. Okay, showing the answers here. I'm not going to go through these. I'm just going to show the answers. Each case, you just have to substitute the two endpoints in and show there was a change of sign. State that f was continuous, and therefore state you have a root. Simple as that. Now, because it's a further maths course, you, I'm just going to point this out at the end. This doesn't tend to come up in the exams, but I'll point it out nevertheless, just for interest. The change of sign rule. Let's just rem remind ourselves what it said. It said, if you have a continuous function, you must have a continuous function, and that function must change sign, f of a must be less than zero, f of b must be bigger than zero, or the other way around, then there's a root between A and B. That's all it told us. Just a couple of ideas uh, about this uh, theorem and how we could or could not extend it. Now, here is a function, x cubed subtract 3x plus 1. Now, the first thing I'm going to say to you is there can be more than one root. Imagine I chose my A here, so this was f of A, and I chose my b here, f, and so that's f of b. f of a is less than 0, f of b is bigger than 0. There's actually 1, 2, 3 roots. Now, my change of sign rule tells us if it's continuous and changes sign, there's a root. It doesn't tell you how many. There's at least one. So there can be more than one. The other thing to talk about, let's just use this function again. This function only tells you what only tells you something's true for functions that change sign. Now, imagine um, we chose our a. Here's our function. Uh, imagine we chose our a to be, uh, let's say, here. Imagine we chose our a to be here, let's say. So f of a is this point, and we chose our b to be here. So our f of b is this point. If I had chosen my a and b such there would be no change of sign because they're both negative numbers. But there's certainly roots there. There's a root here and a root here. So this rule only works if we have uh, uncovered a change of sign. And just because there isn't a change of sign does not mean there cannot be a root. There may well be. Last thing to point out is the importance of the continuous. Here's a function 1 over x. If I choose my, let's say, my a to be here, f of a, my b to be here, and this would be f of b, there's definitely a change of sign, but because the function is not continuous, the, um, I can't guarantee there's a root, and in fact there is no root. This function never touches the x-axis um, this way or that way. So when the function is discontinuous over the interval, you cannot guarantee a root, even if you have a change of sign. And that's all I wanted to say on this topic. So, um, future work then is to do the next video on interval bisection. Thank you very much for watching.